Hey everyone, it's Orca. Tonight we're going to be playing some Splat Zones. I actually started recording this video a little bit earlier than this. Um, just uh, probably 10 minutes ago and I realized that I didn't have my microphone on. So, uh, well you didn't miss anything, you just missed me lose a game. Even though there was really one really cool Splat that I got. So, there is that. But... You guys didn't miss anything, for real. Um, playing Carbon Roller now, just because it's my favorite weapon, and um, I don't really have any desire to play anything else. Let me turn this volume down. Yeah, it's a little loud on my end. Okay. All right, so we got oh, we have some bombs on the other side. Point sensors right there. Have to be aware of those splat bombs. They will try to get some uh, open picks. Okay, so we're actually. Uh, I can't do that. I have no idea what's happening over here. All I know is I'm by myself. Oh, okay, cool. It's a 96 gal. We are actually up one effectively. We can push this and jump for down. I can't do anything about this. This is my team. That was my team. Yeah, I, I can't do anything about that loss at all. Could I have done better there? Um, I didn't really see any. I was trying to see where my team was, where the fights that they were that they were taking, and I couldn't really see where they were. It just felt like they were just not. They were always behind me. So maybe I should have checked behind, see what if anyone was harassing them. Maybe maybe that was the play that I should have went for next time.
Okay, so what's the comp here? We don't have that much long range other than Hydra. They have two bombs and a toxic miss. And I think what? Oh, actually, three bombs. Though. I'm gonna get away from it. Is that a ballpoint? Okay. Look on the left here. I can't fight that. And I'm also in toxic mist. Alright. Oh. Why would you do that? Of all the things that you could do, why that? Ah, oh, shoot. I messed that up. That was a... I'm still throwing it why they just came guns blazing right there. Um, I just want to create a different angle. I don't like being stacked here. Um, Alright, we should be able to get that pick. Nice. We're super clumped right now. I don't like that. But we don't have any specials that, other than Reef Slider, I guess. I can capitalize on that. They have Reef Slider, so I want to see where they Reef Slider try to punish that. They're going for it on the left side of the zone. I should have actually rotated there. Ah, shoot. That's now. <laughs> At least I, I waste the arrow spray. It seems like Reborn is ready, so we're gonna bring him in the next uh, after this match. Okay, where are they taking the fights? Ah, shit, I'm sick. Ah, I got stuck there. Oh, I still got the kill. Nice. That was a delayed wipe. I can push up. I should have just waited. No one's pushing up past the zone other than me, which is always a disappointing thing. <laughs> Slightly. Alright, got that. I can't get that. Will anyone push up this time? This time I'm just gonna shark. What the? Yes, push up. Yes. I like to see that. They're gonna slider the zone. I'm just waiting for it. There we go. Probably could have punished that slider more effectively than that. Maybe if I went up on the right plat there, I could have punished it better. Alright, it seems like Reborn's ready to go. Bring him up.
base meter on. One second, Reborn. I, I don't think I can hear you yet. Hello? Hello, hello. Hey, Reborn. What's up? Yes, hello, hello. How you doing? Not too bad. That's great. Ready to, to watch some League of Legends. And by League of Legends, I mean Splatoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, let me let me get you set up here. Um, Discord, where is Discord? What? Did my call just hang up on accident? Uh, I can still hear you. Okay, cool. All right, you should be able to see now. I see. Easy. Let's go. All right, cool. Yeah. And... All right. You should also see my. I'm assuming you're seeing my camera too, because I'm showing my sharing my OBS. Yeah, screen. it's like the OBS yeah. scene and stuff. Cool. I decided to start showing my face again since I'm about to start my stream back up. I used to stream with my face all the time, but I stopped ever since I was, I thought I was never going to stream again, but here I am about to stream again. So <laughs> also, if you hear your own voice, let me know. Um, I'll just put my headphones on. Wow, this is horrible. Uh, I was not thinking at all. And they know, already know I'm there, so I'm not even going to. I should have, uh, I was not thinking. <laughs> Alright, let me start thinking now. Okay, so they have hammer. Um, they're probably going to start. Okay, two are down there. I have to start pushing on that. Yeah. Got some bombs that way. Pick. That one. Two picks. There's a beacon on those two sides there. Nice. I could have jumped a little bit more aggressively than that. I'm actually just going to back up here. I'm not going to chase. Oh. There's no need for me to rush anything. That was bad. I regretted that the moment I did it. I thought someone was fighting on the left for some reason. One of my teammates. Okay, cool. Whoa! Where'd they- Okay. Oh, let's just 
Taken down, so we have to take some time. So a little bit of time. I hope that they don't just. I need to take another angle then. Ooh, they didn't get it. Shit. Ah man. <laughs> ah, I loved it. Ah oh, man. Oh well. I think a lot of that game looked pretty good, honestly. Um. Do you know, actually, I don't know the interaction because I don't really play rollers, mm -hmm. but I know that sometimes roller players will, like, hold the like, roller to the ground, so, like, mm -hmm. run people over um, when they're jumping in, like, when someone else is jumping in. Um, can you catch, like, a Tetra or some sort of dually before they start rolling? I can't with Carbon Roller only because if I hold it to the ground, it does 70 damage. Yeah, I have to time it. So if yeah. I were on, like, a Splat Roller or a Dynamo or something, I could do that tech. True. But not on this one, unfortunately. Yeah. So uh, I just have to time it right. Yeah. And then there was like a moment when you were on the enemy team's left side. Mm -hmm. um, and like you came to the conclusion that I was going for, which is because um, you were like looking to help your teammates fight in mid. There's like two enemies in the middle. Um, and then you're like, oh, wait, I can just like push up on the people that are coming out of the spawn from the enemy team side. Mm hmm. Um, I like that idea. I think we can definitely, like, if they give you that space, you can commit immediately. Because even if your teammates, like, go down and stuff, if you can secure, which, you know, they're fighting a 2v2, so they should at least, like, you should, on average, they should be able to, like, hold their own if there's not going to make it so that they should lose. But sometimes it'll happen. But even if they do go down, if you can secure a free pick on their side of the map, like, you always can threaten dropping on the people that are still alive in mid and like looking for a good play so those are like the moments where you know, similar to dualies you can like play kind of selfish yeah and, you know, if you just like run in and just secure a pick on someone that's coming in that isn't expecting you to be there or um you know a lot of times if you can get a pick on like a back line you know, pencil metas and stuff like that pick that you get on the back line is so 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 valuable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay So if you ever see those opportunities to blow up their back line, almost always take it. There. That opening yeah. found a little opportunity to get underneath them and find out what's going on. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. I thought I got them the first hit. Uh. Yeah, that, that's one of those opportunities you can start getting greedy and just like yeah. find yourself to pick them back in. Finding the head out of coins, unfortunately. I don't like zip casting around Dynamo specifically. Yeah. I can't so like never I was trying to go around it, but it just came around so around. But I can't harass it with my auto bomb. So. Oh. Nice. Tap here. Okay. 
Action. Um, no, I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I should have. Yeah, no, I shouldn't. I, that was okay. That was fine. I got pick. Pick while we were in control. It's fine. <laughs> Zipcaster, I'm pretty sure it's the case. I don't really play Zipcaster, but someone told me this a while back. And it's mm -hmm. still true. Um, but like a lot of people will normally Zipcaster to walls specifically, and the reason for it is because I think there's like less lag. There's less lag wall, when you Zipcast to a wall. This is, this is landing on the floor. Don't quote me on it, but I see mm. like most. Zipcasters, and I think there was a Chara video as well that I saw that said it. I don't know like the specific differences and stuff, but that's kind of been the rule of thumb. Interesting. That I've heard people that use Zipcaster weapons, so. Yeah, a lot of, I... like, with some weapons you can dive, like, especially backlines and stuff. Like, if mm -hmm. there's like a pencil and you're diving them, or like a charger, like, you can probably use the floor because you want to get that damage, but. If you're kind of zipping around and like uh, surveying the area, looking for a spot to go in, definitely try it over the walls. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely, I use the walls. It's just this stage is kind of, well, there's two reasons why I haven't been using the wall this time. And okay, I'm gonna die. Um. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I had to focus a little. What the? Okay, carbon. That was a carbon moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't used Zipcast on this stage that much, but I'm, I'm actually gonna try Zipcast on this. Oh, 
they're definitely gonna push me for that. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I I do like zip casting to a wall. Um, I think cart like every zip cast weapon I feel has like a different style of zip casting. Mm -hmm. And carbon, it can't really like a lot of times when it zip casts to a wall, it just gets outranged by a lot of things that can kill it. So I like try zip casting directly behind the person. I mean, this is not me. I'm not making any excuse. I'm just giving a like giving a thought process into like what, how I think yeah. about zip passing. But yeah, um, carbon's definitely a weapon that would benefit from being really close compared to other weapons for sure. Yeah. Um, but honestly, it's really the reason I'm not zip casting the wall is just because I I'm not familiar with this stage zip casting for real yet. Yeah, it's. Like I said, I, I do not know how to zip caster, so I would be lost when I press some buttons. But the, yeah, I think it's usually in the scenarios where like if there's gonna be like two or more people looking at you, mm -hmm. usually using walls is better because it allows you to move around faster and there's you know it's less likely that you get spotted. Yeah. But in like the one v ones, I can definitely understand like wanting to play closer range. Yeah, no, I actually didn't even know it had less lag, so that's new information for me. Okay. One thing I've been looking at recently is um, how many bombs are on the other side and what type of bombs. I specifically look for like flat bombs. Actually, let me just come here. Oh, that, I thought that was a, I thought that was an inkling. Uh, I did not think that was a bomb. Is this safe? Yeah, it's a safe job. Yeah. I did it again. <laughs> this is happening early in the match. So that be yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to. Does that happen to me all the time? Like the spot bombs? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that can reach me? Let me see if I can help out. Such a bomb We still haven't capped yet. This is... Oh, no. I, 
I got tunnel vision there. This is concerning. Not that. Okay, we got one more chance. Even right now. Not even. I gotta go for a play on the left side. So. Okay, cool. Oh, there's a jump here. Wait, where'd they go? I just missed them? I just lost track of them. To be fair, they have like ninja squid, so. Oh, they have ninja squid. Thank God. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was the same one. I had to check their gear and like, I think I would have yeah. I had a feeling that exact thing would happen, and I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I think I just underestimated the game. I don't know. Two of us are here. That wasn't worth it. Uh, it's over. I have to try something new though. So. Yeah. But it was pretty pretty reasonable. That was probably your best look there. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, the play on the wall or the bunker, the top of bunker against the uh, wall stringer. Sometimes, like, I, I don't really know. Like, sometimes you just have to make them like. Hit their shots, you know. Yeah. Like, could we be a little bit better or position better? Maybe. But sometimes, sometimes you gotta you gotta keep those those back lines in check. Because sometimes people will like that wasn't a like there wasn't necessarily a benefit to being up there. Um, but there are some spots like I'll play against certain chargers and I'll just like like if our team is capable of pushing, I'll just like hold forward and if they hit their shot. That's good info. If they miss their shot, that's also good info. Yeah. Sometimes you can get a feel of like, you know, where's the new team's gonna crack a little bit, and if the charger is not hitting their shot, so it's like that's really good information to have. That's true. Yeah, you gotta know. You gotta test them to see if they're actually able to actually hit them, mm -hmm. and then uh, have them earn their respect, I guess. Exactly. Uh, the other thing that I would say, watching some of these games, um, a lot of times you focus your positioning around the zone itself. And ideally, I want you to focus your positioning a little bit more forward on like the enemy leaders. Mm. And like kind of let your teammates worry about zone. Like there's a time and place to worry about zone, but there's a lot of times where you can kind of sneak through. And you do sometimes, but I think that's a kind of thing you can do when you come up there. Yeah. Up. You have a put position in front of the zone, you said? Uh, yeah, we'll just try to get. We're just on their in side, front of basically. Cover. Yeah, like you just want to get around barges whenever you can. Mm. That's a good idea. I like that one.
Like right now is where you want to go for lunges. Yeah, go. I'm good. Yeah, they started dying. I should have uh, went back to the zone after that. We have numbers, we want to just punch it back in the Come on. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, as long as you're staying alive. Yeah. Place totally fine. <laughs> couple plays you made there that I was surprised that the person didn't go down. Like there's a couple horizontal flicks and a couple vertical flicks. Or you must have done like 90. Yeah. Damage, but I guess it wasn't enough for the lethal. That is the carbon life. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the carbon life. Mm -hmm. I try not to get even, I, I just try to accept it now. That's the best best way to go about it. Yeah. <laughs> does not does not deny the fact that it can be super super frustrating. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um I think I'm not I, I think I'm like I can be taking more fights with my team. Sometimes I feel. I feel like I'm not paying enough attention to like because there are certain angles I think I can just take advantage of if my team's like in a fight, I can just use that more so, but I'm not I'm not really doing that a lot right now. I think I'm just taking my own fights and like waiting for people to run into me on their side, specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you get stuck on the left side, a lot of times you can sit over there, there's a bunch of ledges that you can play around and potentially like... I just take on my position. Yeah. I should have known since it was that far up. Um, I
Play around the, the wall, you said? Like, this block right here, play on that side for the moon. Oh, okay. Um, so you said the that left block, that black block on the right, right there. Yeah, like the, the I see wide one tall. Yeah. Um, like that little, it's like a half, it's like a one dot tall ledge. Try to play that like, a little bit more when you're from the game. playing around this block. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll put that. Yeah, this angle right here. Yeah. Push a little. Push, push, go push y'all. Push. Move. How many? Okay, I gotta help with this. They know I'm here now. Oh, curling bomb. Suction bomb. Okay. So I thought I avoided the curling bomb. <laughs> It's just trained over there for some reason. Okay. I was about to get two. Nice. Okay. So that, the, the black block? Yeah, so like, between the black block and like, the glass wall, there's like a little opening. Mm-hmm. And like, that is like a little tiny ledge. Mm-hmm, a, yep. a lot of times, after your team, like, gets a pick in mid and you can start pushing up, that's like a really good spot to just initially start going in. Mm-hmm. I think I know Because a lot mean. of people will be playing around there. And like, if you keep moving forward, that's awesome. But sometimes like, if you play the far left side, sometimes you zone yourself out. And not that the left side's bad when you're pushing in, um, but sometimes you're a little bit too far away to be able to make plays with like the shorter range weapons. So when I watch a lot of short range weapons play on the map, after mid, they'll like take that position specifically. I and you see. can use the ledger's cover. You can use that little two by one dot block. The, the uninkable mm -hmm. um, you can use that and you know you can back up completely if you need to there's just a bunch of ledges for you to play around and it's like really close to the end of the game. and you can threaten a lot of plays 
I think I understand. Yeah. know if I should just go for an opening pick or not because it usually ends up that I die. It's a tough call. Oh. oh my gosh. That could have all been avoided if I were just slightly more of a kick. Like, uh, if I can just get on there a little bit higher, faster. Man, come on. Okay. That's my bad. That's my bad. Okay, we just lost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, to answer your question about the opening, sometimes you can go for the plays. Like, I think the play you went for is totally fine. Um, sometimes you can, uh, like, just hug the, or, like, shark. I'm not, it's not even really a shark, but just, like, stay on, like, the mast wall. Mm-hmm. And use that wall to get information about where they're going. Because you have a lot of options. If they if they push you on the left or right, you have a short range fight that you probably one shot them. Um, another option you can go for when you're hugging the wall is like you can get on top mid. And if there's someone on the enemy team that's playing the top mast, sometimes you can go for those picks as well. Because I like your position. Like I like the idea, but yeah, if you don't see something immediately obvious, I would just. Like vertical click the the mast in middle and just like hug the wall and you can get a lot of good vision on like where people are when like when the new team's moving around. So you can kind of just like sit there and like, and, like let see. them come to you and then punish them. Because like if they come to you, you're taking a fight in a range that you're comfortable with. Like a super, super close range and you're playing around the mast. There was a Dapples player in one of the area cups that on Nanta zone. They would use that position like all the time. And they were, it was actually really, really good. Because mm. they could just sit there and then they'd roll out of the mask and they just have these short range fights that they like. And if they didn't I see a play they like, they could just sit there basically and, as long as they wanted to. Just on that masked wall. Okay, I'm gonna try that next time. Was that the da the Dapples player that I played against that one time? It starts with an L. Uh, no, it was like a JP thing. It was like an area player. Oh, but what players? I probably would play that as well. I don't know if I've ever actually seen this starting on that. I see. But. play around that block more once we get advantage yeah use that ledge and then you like try to look for places that you can do. Uh oh uh-huh that's another one of those vertical flicks that looks like it should have done Yep, that's that's Carvin. <laughs> I'm surprised no, those actually. 
Yep, yeah, that's <laughs> just carbon. <laughs> I died. I died. <laughs> Heavy edit. Okay. We're still down one. Ah, uh, we can't cap on. Oh, actually, maybe I should try. So, no, that was a bad idea. I'm gonna die here if I don't get this. Well, that was a quick game. Man, I died to that heavy edit. I was right. They're playing at their max range. They're good at spacing that. That was good on them. Um, That's tough. I mean, we had good opportunities. We had a couple of, like, like that opening. We almost had a clean pick. Player on bubble, we almost had a clean pick. Um, so, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Bit <laughs> I just, Carbon just betrayed me a little that time. Was, <laughs> it happens though. I've been betrayed by Carbon many times. And that is why the burst bomb kit is better. It doesn't, you don't get betrayed like that as, as often. The burst bomb kit in the face. I can't overstay how difficult the pastor is to use. Um, and that last zip caster toward the end of the match, sometimes in those spots, if you can just like stay alive as long as you can, and then at the very end, right before you're recalling, like you'll see zip caster players all the time, they'll they'll go for a flick or they'll go for a zip in, like right as you're recalling, and it's really hard to punish. Mm, yep. Because the second that you land, it, or the second you hit your shot, you immediately you recall. You're already recalling, sometimes, yep. Yeah, sometimes if you just stall out until that very last moment, and like planning that is difficult. Like mm. it, it's not something, oh, just do it, because like, it requires some planning and moving around and timing it properly. So yeah. Time, but that's one idea that can help you kind of stall out a little bit. Even if you, don't, if you don't get a pick there, if they have to focus on your landing, your teammates have a chance to retake at the very end. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Oh, get him. They're still, they're still in that fight. Oh, that's crazy. So like you can move up here, but yeah, play this. Um, if the enemy team's like set up before you can push in. But if you can push in, just push in. Yeah. I wasn't looking over there. Which was my bad. <laughs> We're still up though. Can we get this last? I'm gonna paint a little. I'm gonna go for an immediate good pass based on. Oh! Now you can just like zip cast one. Wow. So zip cast like, at the end there, you said? You could. I mean, you can just like run to the base as well. Either either play is fine. That's but true. when the enemy team is that desperate, like, and this is where like you just want to like understand you, like, your role as your weapon. You're gonna have your your painting weapons and like, supporty stuff. They're gonna be sitting around zone and like painting for it. If they have the reef slider cheese or whatever, which I don't even know how viable that is after the new patch. I'm sure it's probably still fine, but you know, mm -hmm. if they if they Reslide and recap the zone, like you couldn't really do much anyways to stop that. And if it's like this back and forth paint battle, 
if you start moving in early enough, and that's why like I wanted to do the zip caster, or you just start pushing up before they start dropping down. Because then because I can if, distract them, and then they have to... Yeah, if they have to either paint the zone, or they have to focus you. So if you can just, like, find a pick, or if you think you're all running two eyes toward you, and you stay alive, that's just as good as you sitting in the zone. But you're yeah. also, like, threatening the enemy team. And most times when the enemy team's in that spot, they have, like, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, to retake the zone, or else they get killed. They're playing super desperation. If there's someone behind them, they're probably just going to start dropping off ledges, and, like take some really bad fights, so that's why like just put taking them out of their element, putting them out of their comfort zone is a role that you are probably going to be able to do as a carbon better than anyone else on your team. So mm -hmm. when you have those moments, definitely try your best to okay. set set up that scenario. Okay, cool, cool. Think about that. Think about that. Ah, oh, this is annoying. This is an annoying comp to fight against. <laughs> As carbon specifically, I'm gonna have to actually. I can't even go for planks. Just not. Just no point. But I have to take a different angle still. Oh no! Where are they? Whoa! Okay. This should be a free pick, and this should be a free pick. There is a beacon here, they're going to use it. Ah, shoot. There it is. Nice. We're just going to start chucking bombs. Half second away from healing up, that was really important. Yeah. Feel a cap here. There is a beacon on the left side. That one. Let's rotate to the right. They'll be able to get that. Uh, I, I knew they were still there, but I had too much to. Uh, okay. So that chuck. Let me chuck more bombs up around this area because that'll add some paint to the zone. Now I build up. They are 
about to. Oh well. So how are you feeling about the the games right now? This that last game? Uh yeah, partially like that game or just general, either way. Like in just Splatoon in general? <laughs> uh, or just like this rotation. I mean, either way. Um, cause I, like it's been a little bit since we've uh, oh, okay. done like coaching. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it can be like the last game. Mm -hmm. um, or, or just whatever okay, you're every, feeling. I see. Um, well, for this, this rotation, I don't feel bad. I feel like I'm trying. I feel like... You know, there are, I think there are a lot of things I probably could do better, but it's still, I don't feel like I'm playing bad by any means. I think I'm probably, it's like the limitations of, I can't really force a lot of things with carbon specifically, so I can't carry as much as I would, <laughs> can with other weapons. Um, maybe that's like uh, something, but I think I could still be playing it much better. In terms of the game, in general, I feel pretty good. I feel like, um, as you know, I'm I'm about to leave competitive, but I I am uh, still very much wanting to improve. I can't believe that didn't. I actually can't believe that one didn't hit. Okay, well, someone cleaned it up. Uh, <laughs> the night. But, uh, I feel good. I should be able to get this. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good. Yeah, that angle right there was really good. That's what we want to be doing. We're just like, getting into that spot. I thought someone was here. I thought that would work for some reason. <laughs> for some that's reason, I thought that's specific. You, you can sit under that ledge. Yeah. Like a, if you need to, and just wait till they get really close to the ledge. And then just so yeah. Pop here, pop pop like, I'm about to die. Okay. Oh, that's a mint. It's not a sword. Crazy 180. We almost had it. It backed up a little bit. Yeah. Let's on. Oh. Someone should be pushing me in a second here. There's a DC. I, I, I don't know why I'm still alive. There's so much things happening. I don't even know what's happening right now. What point blank? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to paint. Actually no, let me let me stay disappointed and try going for picks. That is my role. Whoa. Are you playing the game anymore? Are you playing, uh... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I play some, some rotations here and there. Um, I do a bit of coaching, and then sometimes I'll need to, like, film for a scrimmer. Like, a like, part of a tournament or something. 
Um, I definitely am kind of like, I'm playing when it feels right, or like if I mm. feel like motivated or inspired to try something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I feel pretty good about the game. I just, uh, I recently got like a new job and I got like a new, uh, well not new, but I've been trying to be a little bit better about working out and exercising and stuff. So I, I've been trying to prioritize those like you know making sure i get enough sleep make sure i give myself some time to, to exercise and stuff which i am so out of shape right now that sometimes mm. i will uh if i do like a full kind of routine for a day i checked out for the rest of the day right completely it's getting get better now but sometimes it's a lift Hopefully some cardio and then take a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's been good. I, I'm like, I definitely, there's a lot that I want to do that mm. I haven't been able to do. Um, a lot of it is routine and just getting, getting into a routine that I'm happy with, and then mm -hmm. I'll get back to Splatoon and stuff. So that, mm -hmm. that's kind of been like the main thing. But uh, yeah, I definitely still play um, some rotations here and there. But I've, I've been like, whenever there's like tournaments going on on the weekend, I'm always checking out stuff. So I'm still in it. But uh, but at some point, I would like to to grind a little bit. I've been enjoying like when I play Splatoon. On my own terms, when I'm excited to play it, like, extra rank is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is this some way for him to get close? Ah, uh, yeah. No, was... that, that plays fine, that plays fine, but, like, let them do that. Yeah, let them yeah, sit yeah. there for two seconds and just wait, wait for the opportunity. They should see me, for sure. There's two of them on here, so I have to go for this. Um, yeah, honestly, ever since I, uh, ever since I decided on, like, quitting comp, I've actually, oh, well. sorry. Oh, you good. Don't be able to make him play. Make him play. I don't know what it is about this map and dying in the corner. Oh, I thought good that was. So it was just a super clean pick. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to get cool. clean picks now. I'm not trying to get. I get so many dirty picks. I'm, I'm trying to get some clean picks. But I think that's what will give me consistency. If I didn't. For a week, sir. I... There's someone who just went on that side as well. Where are you going around? Around? I don't know what my teammates do. Okay. That's where you can focus the people that are unique to me. This is fine, sir. This is where come in. Yeah, Zipcaster was fine. You can also just camp underneath that left ledge where you're at. Like where you started your Zipcaster, you could have just stayed there. Just, just stay there, wait for people to drop people in. People probably are going to rail in and then drop in. Yeah. But yeah. They, they ended up jumping, so the Zipcaster was a better play. Mm. I see. Yeah. Clean picks. Usually for dirty picks, I just refer to them as like desperation picks. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, there's a time and place for it. But, you know, if your team has an advantage, if, you know, your team has control of zone, if there's a bunch of time left in the game, if there's no threat of getting KO'd, like you have time to to just chill a little bit and find that good opportunity. And this is something that like a lot of time, like this is like one of my biggest like downfalls where especially when things start going bad, I will tend to get very desperate if I don't like myself and stop myself. Like my autopilot 
is like it's like one of the worst parts of my game um and i was talking about league at the beginning and like mm -hmm. i like that's like an issue that carries with like every game that i play mm -hmm. like if things start going downhill i start getting really really desperate and especially in a game like splatoon um league as well especially later in the match but like stuff snowballs super super fast so like mm -hmm. Even if the enemy team gets an extra 15, 20 points, like if you get a clean pick and you're able to like take zone and you can start pushing on the enemy team mm -hmm. when they're coming out of spawn, like you can, you're setting yourself up for like you know, 40, 60, maybe even a full KO at that point. So it's, it's just about getting yourself into those positions as best as you can. Yeah. Then and sometimes you can go for the desperate plays so that your team can clean up the fights and then you're good. But sometimes if you can get the pick yourself, just getting a pick and staying alive is like the best thing you can do. As a token player. I tried. No, 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 it was good, it was good. I don't know why the backup lost second. I really didn't know. This is what they do, alive. Your team on the fight, look at us. I thought, why did I think they left? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> we, we, we had the info, but uh, to be yeah. fair, they sat in a tiny little bit of the yeah. <laughs> That was my bad. Okay, you can get back on the map if you want to. Just kind of chill. Okay. Move up when you can, but. I mean, that person's part, you need to go for it. If you want to. Wait, so, like, you again. <laughs> You against Junior, like I'm okay with you taking that from a little bit farther back because you can mess them up. If that was a Dynamo, I wouldn't want us to run in, but against Junior, they're marks, they're, your team has advantage, like you're pushing it immediately. Oh, okay, okay. Oh boy, what a save. I mean, we lose control, but. Good job yeah. staying alive. Running a pick. <laughs> Most scenarios, that will probably be enough to play right there. It's just unfortunate it didn't work out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's someone here. Where are they? Are they on top? And it's like Tri-Slot, the play you're making now is totally fine. But again, that's like a matchup. You can probably vertical click a little bit and then get back to it. Yeah. Go back to that. If you want to. Whoa. Okay, leader. I really want to get me. Okay. Oh, I thought I got that. Oh, I thought I got that. The movement and positioning was so good. Um, I'm disappointed I missed that one. A little bit more. Yeah, I would have been Is where we have numbers? We can look at the point You could probably play like a couple of punkers if you wanted to. That's fine, but this is good. Oh, I can't get out of their way. Let's go. Where is it? You think no, and let's go for another, another ledge camp. Sorry, I had to go. I had to go for more picks. <laughs> I feel it. Man. Okay. <laughs> they got me. 
I should have just jumped out. I don't know why I was staying there. Yeah. I should have just jumped out. That was a much better decision. But, I wouldn't have thought of it in the moment, but yeah, it's a no play. I'm gonna sure. die here. Oh no. Oh no, I don't want to lose this game. <laughs> I actually don't want to lose this game. We have some time, but uh... I need more information. Okay, not lose this town, that's like... Oh wow, there's someone right there. If I didn't get the vertical flick over the wall, I would not have known that. Nice. Um, the one thing I think you did good in the middle of that game when you got those picks and stuff that um, I wanted to be thinking about a little bit more. So like, you go masked, or you like push up to their bunker, mm -hmm. and then. Maybe you get a pick, maybe you don't get a pick, and then you have to back up because, you know, they're throwing bombs, they have a waybreaker out, whatever the case. After you're backed up, healed up, you're not marked anymore from the waybreaker, I want you to immediately think about, okay, what's that next position? Like, how do I get back into that annoying position? Yeah. You need to yeah. be, like, kind of relentless against them. Yeah, that's what I'm, there's uh, lapses. Yeah. Like in terms it's, of it's tough. It's tough. It is tough. Like, I'm really yeah. bad at the front line because like finding those plays is really like you have to be very comfortable in the moment of like improving and knowing what risk to take, where it's relatively safe, and sometimes you have to commit and trust yourself to get your shots. So it, it's definitely yeah. not 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 easy, but a lot of your really good plays. Especially if you don't get them on that first, like, because sometimes you'll just like pop off. Like, you get a really nice first pick and then you just move all it. But sometimes you'll get a pick or you'll like force someone to back up and then you have to back up. Um, but the plays that have worked out afterwards is when you back up and then you immediately take that like strong position. Mm. Okay, yeah. You, you want to be as far forward as you like safely can in those spots because. You never know when it comes to the Yeah, you never know. That. Yeah, that's very true. Okay. <laughs> She'll just. Okay. I don't. I don't know about Oh, I'm so good. Oh, I messed it up. Whoa! Okay. Why am I still alive, though? <laughs> Why am I still alive? What? Okay. Have to. Okay, well, I tried. <laughs> I tried. I got hit every single time by that dynamo. Like, every time. That's another one of those spots where we get that first pick on the decapitator, and then we can, like, find it if we need to. We can throw bombs with the people on the left side. In the moment, you play it really, really well. I'm so mad. Right? Oh, I hit him so play. cleanly. Yeah. I thought you were gonna get him before the ink jet. The play after the ink jet would have been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the range. I was on, the aim was on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need some more right there. Yeah. Take it nice. Yep. This is a spot where yeah, we can definitely try to look for clean pick. Yep. Oh, we're already rolling in. I'm still gonna go. I mean, we can pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got pain, we might as well. Well, I feel like someone's waiting there. <laughs> they weren't. Uh, let me just go all the way around. I got picked somehow. Cool. This was... No one's here. <laughs> nice. Oh. I know. 
Oh, good, really. Yeah, I've been so sick. <laughs> okay. Ah, carving mud. Set up. Yeah, I have to set up for the next thing. Are they even here? Okay, there's a dynamo. <laughs> I try to be fancy. <laughs> I'm still waiting for someone to come with me, I guess. Care enough. What? Uh, I just want to hit that. It looked clean to me, but yeah. Sometimes in the wall, it's a little funky. Yeah, the wall. I, I guess they were on the other side of it or something. Or, or probably the hitbox got. Um, I know it's softer. Sometimes when I hit corners, like it like eats my entire. Yeah, the entire hitbox. Uh, yeah. It's weird. I'm gonna wait here. You can also paint that wall on the left and climb up it to see if you can it. worth it at all. I just thought something would happen. Or your teammates locking for us. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> I just assumed that my teammates would... I just assumed someone would run into me, honestly. That's honestly what I thought. But I could have just waited there, honestly. Just yeah, for my totally. teammates to come back and then... Gotten a better pick. Yeah, and this is why like getting practice with going for clean picks is so important. Yeah, because I know like you're making the right decisions, but because you're using so much mental energy, because it's like you need to like partially de rust and also just get comfortable with the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ideally, when you're like making those jumps and you're starting to get into position on their bunker, um, you're looking at like the top of the UI because your teammates it was like a four v two. So if it was like a four v four, I probably would sit and wait. But because it was a 4v2 and the enemy team only attacked the left, you could probably drop a little bit faster and just like, or like position closer to the top mid and just drop on whoever is fighting in the middle mm -hmm. of the map. Uh, so like when your team has those advantages, you can so, sometimes you can be a little bit faster because like you're behind them at that point. They there's no way that they're gonna turn around, even if they know that a beacon's there. There's no way someone's gonna turn around and look for you when they're gonna get pushed by the rest of your team. Yeah. But it was good true. looking for the. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you chose to take that jump to the beacon, and I like the way that you played it. Uh, but situationally, most times that play is going to be better the way you played it. But situationally, because your team had an advantage, um, you could have played it a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But, but on average, on average, that's how you should be playing it. So mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. Okay, all bombs, just too curling. They're racing. Oh, nice. Good one. Shoot. Oh, that was a jump. I got, I got jumped. <laughs> oh, my bomb got something. Shoot. 
I, I wasn't looking at myself. Uh, so I didn't realize I was stuck there. They definitely see me here. Why did I do that, bro? Queen picks, Orca. Queen picks. It's fun. Yeah. When they pop a bubble in mid, sometimes, like, it's gonna be hard for you to take a fight when they make a bubble up and you have to play against Nautilus. I would have just gone for a flank and just waited for that stuff to clear out before we actually take those paint. But the way you played it was good. Oh, wow. Actually. Oh, they definitely see me here, right? There's no way they don't. Okay, I mean, there's three people looking at you. Yeah, so. that was a distraction. I thought that was good value. Yeah, it's, it's totally fine. Why did I do that, though? I should have known better than that. I thought, actually, what I thought is that my teammate would at least try to fight there. <laughs> like, try to stay there. If you're not running self jump, I'd probably just. Unless you know it's super safe. I yeah, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. But no, I'm with you. I'm surprised I just left you hanging. I could have protected your jump for sure. Uh, it was supposed to be a bait, but it didn't work out. Like, it worked out, and I just I wasn't quick enough to get that. Like, I misjudged it. that still alive? Yes. Do we get it? I can't jump. Oh, I can jump to this though. I need to not. I I try to not push flat wings for that very reason. Like too hard. Oh lord. I'm gonna die on that. Okay. <laughs> you made it tough for me. Yeah. That's all I can do. Exactly. Ah uh, man. Sometimes when you're playing the weapon, and it, it's really tough, because like over time it's like a skill you'll get better at. But I know like a lot of times you start panicking because it's like, oh, there's no way the enemy team doesn't know that I'm here. Yeah. The next level to that is like, sometimes it's okay. Like, okay, they know I'm here, but how do they deal with me? Mm -hmm. And that's why if you're playing around cover, if you're taking good positions, like, are you kind of an open target sitting behind mast? Kind of, yeah. But how do they deal with you? 
Either they waste a special and you get the backup for free, or they have to commit onto your side of the map, which is very, very vulnerable for them. So that's why, like, sitting on mast is, like, not a bad play. Even if they know that you're there, like, obviously there's a bunch of angles where they can punish you from, so mm -hmm. you don't want to just sit there for the entire game. You mm -hmm. do want to mix it up. But sometimes when you're in those spots, like, if the enemy team doesn't have a punish, or if, if it's very difficult for them to punish, like, that's a good spot. So over time, you'll, you'll get comfortable with it. And, like, Carbon's normally, like, this weapon of, like, you just need to find it. But finding it's only, like, half the battle. It's a battle you have yeah. to win. If you don't, then you're just gonna die anyways. But even if you know where it is, like you played against cards, you say, it, sometimes you know where they're at and they still just, just kill you. That's true. <laughs> Yay, auto bomb. Let's go! I'm going all the way. Really value. Sometimes when we're turning our, like, I like that play you went for, but we have to be aware of when the enemy team is spawning back in. Because there's like three of them spawning in as we went for that play. Ah, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. But I love the idea, generally. Just that window wasn't quite like there. I think I'm an hour bomb there, but that was really unfortunate that the horizontal didn't connect. I got lucky. <laughs> I got so lucky there. That's an Octo Rush. Okay. I didn't know if it was an Ink Rush the whole game. <laughs> but yes, it is Octo Rush. Not realizing that my teammates are dying. That's that's my awareness is pretty low right now. I'm about to die. Okay. Oh wow, so much chip damage. Actually, I'm just gonna go for it. Wow. Get 
Yeah, I just don't realize that my team's dying a lot. It just doesn't. What are they dying to? Oh, nice. We gotta push in with this. Oh, wow. I almost died there. I still died. Push him. Push the dynamo. Push him. Uh, I guess there's no. We're still in the lead, I guess. Shoot, man. No. Ah, uh, shoot. I. Um. Okay. But no, is a good observation about feeling like you don't have any awareness. Because, like, the reason for it is because, like, I've given you things to, like, think about. You're, mm -hmm. you're playing math, which is, you know, a spot. Not that you've never taken it, but you're seeing the game in a much different perspective. And so you're, like, focusing on that. And, yeah. you know, when you're tr trying to take certain positions, you're trying to, you know a certain play style to improve in the long term those types of scenarios will happen and it's going to drop your awareness because you only have so much like attention span mm -hmm. so you know over time and this is what i was saying before with um i forgot what it was but like just getting more comfortable with one of the things i was talking about oh with like the the playing slow getting clean kills Mm -hmm. Because I was saying, like, over time, you will notice, like, you'll once you're comfortable enough, you'll be able to, like, look at the UI when you're going to those plays, and you'll see, oh, we have numbers, like, let's go now. And that'll yeah. answer the decision. But you're in a spot right now, when you're learning new things, you have to, like, you're, tra you're making trade-offs. It's a trade-off, basically. Your awareness is going to be suckier than it would normally be. And it's not a fault of you, that's just part of the process. Yeah. But eventually it'll get to a point where your awareness will be fine, and now you have this new skill that you can add into your arsenal. Yeah. I mean, you can sit here for a while. Because when you sit here, they can't play top mid, which makes your team's life a lot easier. Oh, it's rain. It's rain. I wasn't thinking about that. There's one Bobby, wrapping around, I don't think I I'm jumping in, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that was good though. Like, yeah. that was one of those spots, they might know I'm here, how do they deal with me? And like, you sit there and had one one opportunity on the, the V shot. And when you're in that spot, at a certain point, you just have to commit to it. But the patience was good. Okay, cool. The second that they start shooting and running in your direction, that's like your opportunity to just delay. Oh my They're yeah. spending time oh. on the recall, they're not looking at the zone. That angle you got on that first pick was actually insane. <laughs> Most times, if you just sit underneath the ledge, just like let them get closer to the ledge and then you get the easier pick. But I mean, if, you, if you're comfortable in those spots to hit those shots, then go for it. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, Carbon can do that. So, uh, yeah. Carbon specific tech. All right, so you found me out. You got me. <laughs> and that's where, like, now they're adapting to play around you. So if they start sitting in, on the ledge and trying to paint, yeah. then you go in a little bit earlier um, because they're going to try to paint you before they can the drop. So they adapted to you. Now you get to adapt to what they're doing. Ah, uh, there was two of them. I should have jumped out much earlier than that, but... Yeah, I think that was good. That's like the perfect example of like, okay, you know I'm here, how do you deal with me? Yeah. 
and like V Shot doesn't have a great way of dealing with you, so you're fine to sit there for a bit. But yeah, at a certain point, you, you pull the trigger and you just jump back. But I, I like the trying to miss. Yeah. Yeah, I can jump here, say. Ah, uh, real. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting to see where my team is first before I commit to anything. Oh wow. Uh, you are on the way here. Are we about to lose? No. I thought that my teammates would push in with that. We were up by two. Shoot. Okay, I can't panic. So good. Yeah. I could, could have committed to the jet a little bit earlier, but uh, so so close to doing. Yeah. I was thinking about that on the screen with me. Oh, this is horrible. I'm about to die. No, come on, please give me. I couldn't get my arm out fast enough. Okay. We can still win this. This is winnable. We just have to actually push up. That's it. And then a king pick, and that should probably yeah. be enough. I'm gonna look for a pick on this side here. They see him here, but I'm still gonna wait for him. They're gonna have to drop it somewhere. Oh, I have no. Dang. Oh, that, was, that one kind of sucked to lose. I mean, we got our pick. We, we got what we needed. <laughs> we did. We did. We just got a little little caught up with the, uh, that wave break that kind of slowed us down on the follow-up. Yeah. It happens, it happens. Oh, Almost that's the rotation. Come back. Oh, man. Now I'm back down again. Oh, well. It doesn't matter. Like... It's this whole season. I've been playing so many different weapons in X rank. I I really knew my score was gonna tank a lot. Um, yeah. So it's perfectly fine. I'm just. That's but now nice I'm playing thing. carbon again because uh, mm. now that I don't have to play good weapons anymore, <laughs> some not. <laughs> I, I can just play whatever I want. <laughs> and I love carbon, so you know. Yeah. Is there is there a reason why you like? I don't. I don't. I kind of like the V carbon. But mm -hmm. is there a reason why you prefer it over the deco? Uh, I just re I this was like the first weapon I really loved in Splatoon in general because I only started playing with Splatoon three, and if it weren't for this specific weapon, I don't think I would be playing this game as long as I I've been playing it. So I was playing yeah, it before the. Hmm? I was gonna say there's no wrong answers. I was just interested. Yeah, so like before the deco even came out, I was playing this. And then the deco came out, which was exactly the kit I wanted for the deco. And I was like, okay, great. Um, and I love the deco. I, I you know, I five starred both of them. I, like, I love both of them very much. But uh, mm -hmm. I think ever since the last buff on Carbon, I just wanted to see how this one felt. Because I knew that. The buff was really meant for this kit. It wasn't really meant for the deco kit, because the deco kit's already very strong. Yeah, and it has a burst bomb to kind of clean up some of the... Exactly. Not so that's just carbon play that <laughs> Yeah, so I just really wanted to feel how this weapon felt with uh, the buff, and that's why I started playing it again more, but... I might go back to the deco, you know? I mean, not, I'm not I might. I definitely will go back to the deco at some point. Um, 
But this is definitely like my favorite kit in the game, easily. Uh, I think it's a fun kit. Didn't they like buff the, they made the special slightly cheaper recently? Yeah, they made the special cheaper. They've done a lot of buffs for carbon, like a lot. And it's only for this weapon, honestly. Like, yeah, And yeah. I think that my build for it is not a typical build. And I think that it opens up a different type of play style that allows me to play. I can play more back, like more midline because I have double auto bomb. Um, obviously, I give up stealth jump, which is... Yeah. I mean, because I don't have Ninja Squid on it either, it's, I think it's fine. Mm. And I get, I get special really, really fast, obviously. I have another build for this where I just like, it's just a, it's just for special. What, what build is that? It's like this and, and this and it's the shoes here, it's these shoes. I don't like Ninja Squid on V Carbon specifically because I don't think it yeah, really yeah. benefits from it, for real. I would agree. I would agree. Um, like, I don't think it's bad, but I I don't feel like it's optimal either. Yeah. Because you have you have to come up with a lot of other plays. Exactly. Like Ninja Squid plays. So I feel yeah. that. Like the the two Carbon Rollers have completely different play styles in my mind. It is completely different. And I think a lot of people don't play. They play. They try to play both of them the same. And I think that's a mistake. But you know, I'm also not the best carbon in the world, so maybe I'm. No, yeah. <laughs> I'll play it wrong, you're, you know. <laughs> your, your general feeling is a thousand percent. I, I would agree. I'm also yeah. not a carbon player. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I would. I would totally agree with that they have different niches, which is really cool. I, I think this kit, especially with where. Zuka has kind of existed for a while. Mm -hmm. I would much rather see this kit than the, the yeah. kit. But I think the fact that both can kind of exist, obviously Deco a lot more comfortably, but I think they're both pretty strong. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. It's just, it's so hard to use Zipcaster. It is, but then it's like such a rewarding special to get good at too, you know? Yeah. So I feel like, honestly, car this carbon just hasn't been pushed enough. It just hasn't been pushed enough. Every so often, uh, Kyo will play it on stream, and I'm like, hey, this, this weapon's actually pretty good. Why don't people play it? And then I look at everything else that exists. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. Yeah. You have to work a little bit harder for this. But yeah, you definitely have to work harder. I'll just be getting random triples with the Zuka on on the other one. I'm like, dang, yeah, this this kit is... <laughs> it just kind of does the work for you, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of times. Um, but I like difficult things. Uh, <laughs> I like big, I like making it as hard for myself as possible, you know? Yeah, I mean, I and like, difficult isn't even necessarily, like, worse. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, I don't know, like, there's a lot of plays and a lot of, like, versatility that something like autobomb can provide to like a comp oh yeah for sure and like just zipcaster it felt really awkward at the beginning of the game when i was playing com like mm -hmm. how do we really like slot this in as part of the part of the team game plan because mm -hmm. i was playing with the stamper for a bit like early on but um but on the more that we've seen it it's like as people get more and more technically sound with it and consistent with it like you can just go for a lot of plays and be super, super creative with it, so. Yeah, it's definitely the most flexible uh, special, easily. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I think, what was I about to say about auto bomb? I was about to say something about auto bomb specifically. Oh, I, I think that the vanilla kit is actually Slightly better than the deco kit on Rainmaker, specifically. Um, just more more object damage stuff. More. I mean, if you don't play the Ninja Squid version, it's more speedy. Then it has. It just has more. It just feels better than Rainmaker to me. Whenever I play it, like I actually literally, I did play this in comp. Like our first two seasons of Dime, I I played this version of carbon on on rainmaker and i it was really good we got some really solid wins with that no yeah. um i can definitely see it 
I think especially on Raymaker, like when your team's pushing, like enemy team is gonna be sitting on a lot of ledges, and I think mm -hmm. that's where something like Zipcaster can get a lot of value. Yeah, definitely. You find that creative opening that your team needs to like push in. And a lot of times people like teams don't necessarily it's not that they don't respect it, it's just that special zipcaster is something that like you don't want to have to play around with. Because sometimes if someone zipcasters, I can just kind of ignore it and it's like I'm just gonna pretend they don't exist and then I'll like make the recall or I'll like kind of better play in the meantime. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they'll catch you in positions and it's like I like, I have to respect the zipcaster or there's mm -hmm. a decent chance to get punished. And when you catch the enemy team in this spot, it feels so bad for them. Yeah. Like, like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, the, the only other thing I wanted to mention just in terms of like coaching type of stuff. So like when you're playing, um, what's it called? When you're playing the mast, top mid, mm -hmm. and this is like something that you'll, you'll wanna, sometimes it's hard to like theory craft just by thinking about it, but like as you're playing, because there's some matches where you're kind of in the stalemate and you're just kind of sitting on top of mass and it's like, I can probably, like, I, I, in your head it's like, if I don't do something, I feel like I'm, like, wasting time. You know, it's like, I feel like I'm not getting any value and like, you feel like you have to force. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you do want to, like, go for plays, but one thing to keep in mind when you're playing those types of positions, it's, it's kind of like, um chess in a weird way where it's like if you're sitting on mass you're denying the enemy team from being able to get on top of the netting top mm. and by you being up there and preventing the enemy team from taking that type of position like you're keeping them in check by doing that you're enabling the rest of your team to be able to make like a lot of plays but they can they can take way more flexible positions because they don't have to worry about that area of the map that you're coming for them. Mm. So, it, you, like, you can't just sit in a place forever and be like, well, I'm holding this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool, yeah. Like the most extreme example. Uh -huh. But sometimes it's okay to you know, hold a spot three, five, ten seconds, even as like a carbon. It feels bad, but when you're playing with that up close position, like you're you're keeping in check a lot of really good options that the enemy team wants to take. Math is a very high priority part of the map because without it, Manta is really awkward to push past mid. It's like really hard to find openings, and you you can definitely feel it. Like if you get stuck on your right spot in the middle, like the far right side. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like everything outranges me, and like I can't really find like a really good play. And a lot of weapons will end up kind of in a similar position as like carbon feels in that type of spot. So, especially a lot of the shorter range weapons really want to use that mast area. So, you know, again, as you get more comfortable, you'll start looking at enemy team comps. You know, sometimes you'll see like the the dynamos, the nautilus, that they they just want to be in that position, and you're keeping it in check. But then there's that other step where it's like, you know, if you're denying the enemy team carbon, for example, or a carbon-like weapon, you know, one of those like really annoying short-range weapons. If you deny them the opportunity to make a play on your team, mm. that's like a lot of value uh, for sure. Yeah, it's like you're 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 giving your teammates opportunities to make a play, and that's where you have to kind of make a decision. And obviously, you don't always want to just like, oh, you know, my teammates make a play. Sometimes you need to be the person to make a play, uh, which I, I think you're very comfortable with making that kind of decision and going for stuff, so I don't think it's necessarily like a problem with your playstyle, but you know, in, in like the other side of extreme. So I think you're kneeling a little bit close to like, I need to make something happen or else this game is doom and gloom. And sometimes just, even if it's just holding off a couple, like two or three extra seconds, you know, oh, Dynamo's really close. I might be able to get this pick versus, you know, wait for them to just overstep a little bit. And this is where like, if you get comfortable um with whatever weapon that you're playing like if there's like a part of the so like if you're sitting on mast it's like what part of the netting do they have to step onto so that i get a one shot on them with my yeah. Yeah. so it's like you, know, you have this red line and it's like once they cross this red line i'm going in you but until then i'll just kind of chill, just chill. Um, 
Yeah. So like those are as you're kind of setting up and like you know, when I when I mention like some of these positions like on uh, Grind Water and uh, Mast on Manta, those are some of the things that like you'll want to keep into consideration. Like you're gonna get a lot of action in those spots. That's why I generally promote them is because like you get to take close range fights and those are very like hot parts of there's things coming and going all the time so you want to inject yourself in these areas especially if there's cover you can play around and like, explode against the enemy team yeah. so yeah. It, but it the mastery comes with you know understanding oh if it's like in that one match of like if it's junior here versus trislosh versus nautilus versus dynamo like you're playing that same position on mass four different ways some of them you can be the more ranged weapon and you're just kind of like you can poke at them and pressure them away and that's where you can get a lot of value from like your auto bomb where you can like just force them off their plot and then you can herd their bunker and you can make the decision if you want to keep pushing it at that point mm -hmm. um but sometimes you can force that kind of play you know if it's something like nautilus like you said you don't want to just like run into them so you're kind of just that nautilus and like dynamo are those types of weapons where it's like you find that red line and you just want to punish them if they cross that, if they cross cross that line yep. exactly. so that's that's where like the the mastery comes in and once you're comfortable like you know oh i want to play this spot oh i want to play this spot over time that's how you um, you know, get really comfortable in those spots and you can start thinking about that and you kind of felt it as well as it's like, when you're playing on mast Yes, they might know that you're there, but it's also... And maybe they don't know you specifically are there, but they know... Like, during openings, you kind of expect someone on the enemy team to be playing either near mast or on it. Mm -hmm. So... Most times, especially, like, as you continue to climb, like, teammate, like the enemy team will pressure... You know, like, they're just throwing torpedoes on the backside of it, which is really effective against the mast. Um, but even if they know that you're there, it's like they still don't have a good way of like dealing with you. So you can kind of just sit there and again keep things in check and like, look for those opportunities. And then if they start throwing a bunch of rain on you and they're like poking at you from all these little angles where they can like, barely see your hitbox, you know, again, as you play that position more, you'll get more comfortable and you know you'll, you'll have those escape routes ready. And you know, as you were moving around the mass. Like, first you played kind of, like, on your team side, and then sometimes you, like, move a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, and, like, that opens up a bunch of different angles, both for you to make plays as well as the enemy team punishing you. Mm -hmm. So, you're you're exploring those types of positions, and you're, you're doing everything really well. Um, it just, it takes time. And again, when you're trying to be thoughtful during your matches about those things, you're going to compromise on some of your other skills, so... When you're going into rotations, you definitely want to kind of not not going into a rotation and be like, "Hey, I'm 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 okay losing on my game." I mean, if that's what happens, it's what happens. Yeah. But just know that you know you're making the trade-offs, and in the long run, it'll be. Cool. And that's why, like, I I like your mentality of like, you know, I'm playing a bunch of different weapons right now. I know that my you know rank could be a little bit higher, but it's like if you want to get your rank up, you've proven yourself hey i can just pick up a weapon that i'm somewhat com you know if, I, if i'm somewhat comfortable and i just lock in with a single weapon like i can get those points back and it's up to you to figure out you know, do you want to have fun do you want to like, learn mm -hmm. and like try a certain strategy that you watched someone else do or you know an idea that you have or whatever the case is so, yeah that, that mentality so is always super important because no matter what your rank is like if you want to lock in and, and you know, climb back up to 200 or 2k. I I have a lot of faith that you could pick up a dualies or pick up a, yeah. a carbon and just stick with it, and then like, just make your climb. So yeah, it's all about having that that proper mentality when when playing through the games. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I feel um, I, I feel good. I feel this is I feel good about just uh, just playing the game right now and trying new things. And I don't know, I feel good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good spot. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Where I'm just like, 
I have a couple of different weapons that I'm trying to play. Um, but then so there'll be some days where it's like, oh, let's, you know, let's, let's play Slosher and try to just stick to this weapon for a week and see if we can push up a little, like, push our, our ranks up a little bit. Because mm. usually, like, as you're playing, if your rank gets too low, not that people are, like, worse than you, but it's, like, you can kind of, like, get away with certain things. Yeah. Like, you get to a certain rank, and it's like, okay, well, now people are really, you know, I'm starting to hit my limits of these people are really testing me, so mm -hmm. sometimes I'll, depending on, like, where my rank is, I'll shift to a certain mentality. But... Yeah, it's a, yeah. Was there again? Oh, no, I was just saying good stuff, but I, you, you definitely have a very good mentality when it comes to the game and everything, which is half the battle, because a lot of people really get, and this goes into, like, the, the whole result culture and divs and all the competitive side of the game, where people are so hard stuck on, like, I need to get results, I need to be teams, I need to, like, get a certain X power. Mm -hmm. And so they're nonstop, like, in performance mode, and they're not giving themselves time yeah. to learn and experiment and improve. And that's where people will, you know, naturally hit a certain roadblock, whether that roadblock be, you know, Div 8, Div 5, Div 3, you know, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different for each person. But people will hit a certain floor and then they just feel like their heart's stuck and they can never improve. And, you know, they start getting that fixed mind state and they start having a really toxic and negative experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know until changes. Yeah. And they, they don't... A lot of times people would get a lot of value out of just accepting where they're at and trying yeah. to find things to improve. But because of results and stuff, people will just brute force a million tournaments a week. Oh. And, you know, every so often, you know, there might be a 5% chance to, to beat a certain team consistently, but you know, if it's a weekly and put yourself in a bunch of different tournaments, Eventually, you'll get those results, which is definitely something to be proud of. But, you know, don't get yeah. me wrong. But mm -hmm. it's like that—that's their way of improving. Is just like, Improve just force I'm gonna, con yeah, I'm constantly hitting my head against the wall, and then hopefully something, you know, hopefully I get just I accrue enough results so that when I do, you know, whatever they're trying to achieve, they get all their results and it looks really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It, it's definitely interesting to see how people approach things, but. Yeah, I everyone think, has their own way, you know? That's yeah. Really... For better or worse, I think our community is structured in a way where naturally I think people will, uh, without thinking too hard, they'll kind of like funnel their way into that. Especially <laughs> when, if you're coming into the community, that's all you see mm -hmm. is just nonstop that. Some people often forget the bigger picture, and then, you know, in, in the short term, it might not make a difference. They can not go into just by playing and playing enough, whatever tournaments, eventually you'll, you'll get the results that you want um, up to a certain point. But eventually, you're going to hit that cap, and if you don't learn how to improve, it's going to be a miserable experience at a certain point. And you know, that makes <laughs> out. Oof, been there, done that. For <laughs> the younger self. I, I, I don't say this as as feeling superior. I say it as someone that has tragically gone through this cycle. Uh, oh man. Yeah, I, I don't know how that. I mean, I I know how it feels to be upset, <laughs> like mm -hmm. losing. But I don't think I've ever competed into the, like I I haven't ever made like competition like the soul like so all-consuming that it just took actually no, no no let me think about that when i was trying to get good at ultimate smash bros ultimate specifically i i took it very that was probably the worst my mentality's been <laughs> for sure for sure because um it was just i don't know what after you feel like you hit a plateau like a then you just I don't know, you start questioning your self-worth and you start, mm -hmm. you start questioning a whole bunch of stuff that's just like, okay, this is, 
this is getting a little too serious for me now. <laughs> yeah, you're like, am I even good? Am I even smart at all? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, and that's a tough thing, especially like, because there's a lot of like, I group a lot of people into like the weekly grinder category, mm -hmm. where they just play in every single tournament every single day. Mm -hmm. and it, it's on like Twitter, I'll like see. It's like it's exciting for them, and I like I'm happy for them when things go well. But it's like you know, their whole mood shifts depending on like how the placement goes. They do well in the tournament, they're overjoyed, life is the best thing ever. And then if they like have a, a bad tournament or like worse than they ex would expect, they start like seeding or whatever. It's like, there, you, you can see the, the sad posts, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I feel bad, but at the same time, there's a different way of approaching this so that you don't have to spend a bunch of time and your results dictate how you feel about your experience with something that you're putting in thousands of hours into. Yeah. It's a better way. It's tough. Again, I, it I, is, I've been through the wonder. And I, I think I it's. Burnout. Yeah, and I mean, to an extent, it is natural. I mean, obviously, if you lose, you feel bad. I don't think there's ever been a tournament I've I've been I've performed bad at, and I haven't felt a little sad. At least, like a little bit, like, dang man, that sucks. But I think it's about the rebound. Got, how fast do you rebound from that? How much do you let that dictate what comes next? I think that's um just how it. it that's, I think, the, like something I even struggle with, I would say. Because my mentality, I think, you know, I think my mentality is good in terms of just baseline. Like, I, I have a good mentality when it comes to the game. But then if I do end up, if I do get tilted, if I actually get tilted, then it's very hard for me to rebound from that. <laughs> like, it, it, mm -hmm. it kind of sucks. Like, I... I don't think I'm over that or anything. I don't think I'm above that, but I do think that like on a base level, I have a better mentality than a lot of people just because that's just my natural disposition. But if I start tilting, I, I tilt pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely understand, but yeah. having, having a good mentality is definitely something to It's a lifelong to work battle. On and <laughs> I, I wish it was like, People definitely discuss it in the community, but I don't think it's as normalized as throwing yourself into a bunch of matches, scrims, tournaments, whatever, and playing. So, like, just using. Uh, I don't know, group force is the best way to describe it, but you're just kind of just like playing. Yep. Like, some people are going to naturally, like, improve because you know, even if they're not actually thinking about it, some people are better at, like, processing and like they can almost do like mini bother views like between deaths and stuff like, exactly oh, I could have done this better and like you know some people will be better at that than others but it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting as i as i get into a bunch of different communities mm -hmm. it's always there's a lot of differences between communities and there's a lot of differences that i really appreciate about the splatoon community mm -hmm. um but it's always funny to see the same pitfalls that are probably like, you know, people are probably playing like competitive chess in their local community like oh, 300 yeah. years ago, and it's probably like the same, the same things that I'm thinking about. I'm yep. sure there's someone that's long gone that that had the same ex experience. Oh, so true. So true. It's just the nature of competition. 100%. Mm -hmm. Biff, did, did you have anything else? I'm, I'm kind of... Yeah, you're wrapping it. You're ready to... My brain, is, my brain is about to turn, turn off for the night. Yeah, nah, uh, same. Uh, nothing nothing else for now. Um, other than other than thank you. Thank you very much. For, as always. Yeah, that was always fun. For helping me out. Uh, and um, I... I <clears throat> I think, I mean, I know that when I leave the team, uh, 
Lavender and them are still going to be reaching out to you for sure. <laughs> so I hope I hope you still help them <laughs> in some yeah. capacity. But you're going to. I don't, I never we're had any. A great group of people, so that's always, always fun to to work with with anyone in the, in yeah. the crew. Yeah, but uh, nah. I, I appreciate you even helping me, even knowing that I'm not I'm not playing competitive anymore. You know, it's almost like is there even a reason to help someone like me? I just I just like improving. That's really it. It's not even for any other reason at this point. Um, but I appreciate that for yeah, sure. I mean, definitely, it's one of those things that like I feel like these discussions and stuff like help me better understand or be more creative or like think about stuff mm -hmm. more than just like, kind of playing the game like you need like a mixture of both like, you have to play the game or else you're gonna miss out on stuff but i think like, you know, being able to collaborate with others kind of sometimes you'll do stuff i'm like oh, i would not have approached it this way <laughs> um, and it's just like I, I get that a lot, like, that's, like, the most satisfying thing when watching. Like, there's certain players I watch, like, their streams and stuff, and it's, like, that's what I'm looking for. But it's always just fascinating if I'll just, like, tune into a random tournament. Like, if I'm watching, even for, like, I don't even know, like, not even, like, a big tournament or something. If I'm watching, like, a random low ink or, or something. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes people will hit, like, it's like, oh, you know, maybe they're, they have whatever, but it's, like, they'll their level of skill and comfort with whatever weapon that they play and like their ranges and everything is is like super like refined so mm. it's like they'll, they'll get angles and like they'll go for plays i'm like i didn't even know this was possible <laughs> yeah like I, i've literally never seen someone make this play and it's always just, it's it's super i've come to appreciate i don't know it sounds like cheesy but i i appreciate like the almost like the art and the beauty and the creativity that yeah. people have when anyone, I, I think what it is is just like over time. Whenever I'm around people that put in a bunch of time into something, mm -hmm. and they're like focused and like trying to you know, hone their craft, work and improve and everything, like seeing that end result and seeing the little attention to detail on things is something that I definitely. I don't really think about it like playing competitive because I've always like just really enjoyed like competition and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, no matter what it is, like school, random sports growing up, you know, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. like there's a way to compete on there. But uh, but yeah, that's it's it's been a, a new my boomer phase of getting older is is appreciating the the attention to detail. That, that's my current art. <laughs> it's a little, I, I don't know art, but I'm sure people that are like that that are really good with art, they like, like oh my god, like because there'll be like random paintings and it's like. I forgot who it is. I don't remember names or anything. Mm -hmm. But like, there's some paintings that like on the surface kind of just like look like nothing. Like, why do people? Why would someone pay millions for this? Mm -hmm. But then it's like people will talk about it that like no art, and they're like, oh, like I, I forgot the specifics, but it's like something about yeah. the way that like the brush strokes are. It's just like people yeah. that are like in the know, like they can describe it and talk about it in a way that's like. I don't know. Like, can, I can it can make really you appreciate the, yeah. the craft that went into it. I yeah. love craft. That's like my favorite thing in the world, I think. And I think, I don't know, just seeing how people, there's this painting in my parents' house whenever I go to visit them that's like mm -hmm. on the wall. And when you go up to it, it's just like very textured. It, it has, you know, it's just this blue, it's just a whole bunch of different colors of blue kind of mm -hmm. it when we go up to it it's like okay there's like really thick paint here and thin paint here and it's like tech just really interesting details that i think you know someone who made that whoever made it i don't know who made it because i'm not as like like you i'm not someone who's like i mean i'm into art but i'm not into like that type of art <laughs> personally yeah. so yeah if um, you can find the person that made it or someone that understands the the level of effort of like what they're trying to express or what they're trying to like do with that it, it, there's nothing better than... i know i think that's beautiful i think that's like what what this is all about <laughs> just adding yeah. beauty to the world in very small ways like that's how i try to live my life just 
adding small beauties. That's uh, my motto. So, yeah, that's, I think that's very a very wise, uh, <laughs> wise perspective. But definitely, I, I wish I would have learned it a little bit younger. Because definitely, growing up, I, I was very super results oriented, very focused on you know, winning, losing, and everything. And, Mm, yeah. Not appreciating the process, learning, all that, all that fun stuff that's associated with it. So, but hey, I guess that's why people, the whole like frontal lobe developing and <laughs> weird stuff, it's like, yeah, I guess, I guess at a certain point, I don't know, I, I get where people come from. Like, oh, man, <laughs> your 30s and 40s are really best times of your life. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what they say. It's like, the older you get, the more you're just having a good time yeah. every year I, I feel great every single year i'm like yeah this is this is the best year yet personally i mean just because i've never had i never had a desire to go back in time i've always been very happy with where i am in general um, this is starting to get more philosophical than splatoon based oh, no <laughs> we're, we're, we're circling back to the splat fest, but we're definitely not picking yeah time. we're good <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, past, present, the future, you know, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as, as the most uh, thoughtful I, I will get for the next 12 hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang it up. But, uh, cool. Yeah, appreciate the time, appreciate the games. Always fun to watch and yeah. excited. Your your carving's a lot of fun to watch. Your, your mechanics are really really nice to see and if <laughs> Thank you had a weapon you. that was a little bit more consistent with the one shots and i don't know how you don't get picks when you clearly should be getting your picks um <laughs> yeah well i mean it's that, just the like... nature of i just gotta get slightly better it's, i think the more familiar you become with the weapon as you said the more you can hit those more consistently mm -hmm. so i think it's just a matter of i just gotta put in the rotation like the reps to no, okay, as you said, like, if they cross this specific line here, I am 100% guaranteed to get a flick, given my, I mean, uh, get a, a splat, given my reaction time is good enough, so. Mm, yeah, 100%. So, yeah. If you do another session in the, in the future, definitely feel free to, to reach out. I love watching, and uh, yeah, until next time. Yeah, until next time. Have a good night. Later, Orca. Take care. Later. Bye. All right, y'all, that has been, um, I hope you guys enjoy the conversation after too. It was pretty cool. Just talking to Reborn, always, always a pleasure to talk to my guy. Um, follow Reborn at NA underscore Reborn on YouTube, on Twitter, on Twitch. Um, very smart human being, very down to earth, kind individual, uh, and always conveys information in a, in a way that I think is really um, palatable.